Good morning and welcome. Thank you all for being here today on this truly historic day for BART. My name is Maisha Everhart and I'm the manager of local government and community relations. Um, I, I especially want to thank all of our community partners. Uh, BART would not be able to keep the Bay Area moving without them. But first of all, I would like to introduce our BART board president, Tom Radulovich. Uh, thanks, Maisha, and thanks uh, everyone for coming out today, um, uh, the guests behind me and then all of you. So uh, I'm here today to talk a little bit about this bond, and, and uh, I wanted to put it in context. First of all, I wanted to acknowledge the contributions of the people standing with me and then other people who are not here uh, in really helping advise BART on how to deal with this problem of unmet capital needs. It's about a nine uh, it's over a $9 billion problem, uh, and the traditional sources uh, could only account for about half of that. So uh, we really needed to come up with a way to uh, fund all the district's capital needs, everything we need to keep this system in a state of good repair, and then everything we need to expand the system to meet uh, future needs. Because as we look at the region's plans, uh, we're going to depend more and more and more on BART. Um, we've seen a huge increase in ridership, but I remember this years ago when we were working on the regional rail plan. Uh, plans for, you know, the future decades that ca count for us uh, not carrying about 450,000 riders a day like we do today. Um, some of those are looking at 600 or 700,000 riders a day. And then I look at that and think, well, gosh, what do we need to do to the system? And it's going to be a massive overhaul. It's going to be uh, very similar to building the system in the first place. Uh, the other thing is that the system is aging. Uh, the system is a little younger than I am. And I can attest to the fact that uh, as you reach middle age, things wear out. Uh, and they need to be replaced. Now, unlike me, BART's going to be fresh and new and it's going to be able to do more things uh, than it did when it was new. Uh, but uh, that's just also sort of where we're at. We're also at that midlife where, uh, and a lot of other older systems have been through this several times. They've completely renewed everything. Uh, and then we will get there we, in the past, in the next decade. All the original components, whether that's track or electrical systems or the train control system, uh, will be replaced on BART. And in a way, it'll be a 100% new system. Let me so there'll be some concrete, some civil structures that are original. Uh, but a lot of the original components will have to be completely over repl replaced and replaced in a new way. Um, I also wanted to put this in the context of uh, all of the ways that we've, uh, all the folks we've reached out for money. I mentioned the state and federal support. Um, we've relied on that since the inception of BART. Um, that has been declining. Uh, state and federal support for transit, not just BART, but throughout the Bay Area, throughout the country, throughout the state, uh, has been declining. And that's sad, but, um, you know, fortunately we're a rich region. Uh, I feel bad for other regions that aren't uh, as wealthy as the Bay Area because all, every region is increasingly dependent on its own resources uh, to meet its needs for capital in the transportation arena. And that's not just uh, transit systems, but that's things like roads as well. Uh, we've reached out to our riders. I mentioned in the boardroom, we, uh, when I was newer on this board, we passed a, a, budget, a fare increase. We put that money towards, uh, it was the match for a system renewal. One, it turned out to be a $1.5 billion project uh, that culminated about 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, we are also dedicating all of the fare increase revenue that we've done with these um, uh, every other year fare increases that match the CPI. All of that new money uh, is going to uh, capital. So in this budget that we will hopefully pass today, you'll see about $140 million of fare box money uh, will go into capital and we will maintain that. We have the uh, maintenance of effort language in this bond. Uh, that means that we will maintain that, uh, that uh, commitment uh, of fare box money. Uh, to this. We've gone to the voters three times for bonds. This will be the, th this is now the third time. Uh, the first was to build the original system. The second was the earthquake safety bond uh, about a decade ago. Uh, and this will be the third. I also wanted to touch on the earthquake safety bond. That was one where, you know, we realized that the original system was not built to the standards that we needed it to be. We had done a lot of uh, work, well, work with geologists to say, oh, you know, Hayward Fault Zone is a much more dangerous fault zone than, we, uh, than the original designers of the system thought and then they'd learned a lot about earthquake engineering uh, from quakes, Northridge quake, Kobe quake and all of that. We knew we had to do something major with the system. So uh, that was the last big bond 
And I think we can report that that bond's been a terrific success. Those projects are all being delivered on time and on budget. It was some very, very tricky engineering. Some of those things where we didn't know exactly what it is we needed to do because it was really cutting edge engineering. Um, but we've managed to bring those projects in. Uh, the work is mostly done. Uh, and it really shows that uh, when you give BART the money to do a major uh, overhaul, uh, that we can do good work. So I have some confidence that uh, the three and a half billion dollars of work uh, that's in this bond will be well spent. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to let you hear from some of the folks who helped us shape this bond and have helped us think about uh, the ways in which we meet our, need to meet our capital needs. And I'm going to turn it back to Maisha, and she's going to introduce the other speakers. But uh, thanks again, and um, to all of you, thanks again to my colleagues, especially the four uh, members, Directors Josefowitz and uh, um, Keller, and Rayburn and Murray, who actually, Saltzman, sorry, who put together uh, this uh, bond program and are kind of looking at those capital needs in a comprehensive way. So, uh, Maisha, the show's yours. Next we have Matt Nichols from the Office of Mayor Libby Shah. Thanks, Maisha. Yeah, my, I'm Matt Nichols. Uh, I'm uh, uh, here representing uh, Mayor Libby Schaff. I'm her policy director for infrastructure and transportation, and this is a discussion of infrastructure and transportation. Um, we are very supportive of the bond. Uh, BART is obviously very important to Oakland. Uh, its headquarters, four of its, all four of its tracks, eight of its stations, and its airport connector are are critical to getting um, Oakland residents uh, to jobs and. Uh, people in the region to jobs and recreation in Oakland. Um, I'm a daily commuter uh, to BART and I have been for 20 years. It's allowed me to not own a car uh, and to raise a family without a car. BART has been central to that. Um, and we know that um, every time there's a problem, we know that it's time to fix the system. Um, and so we're very supportive, the mayor's very supportive of a fix the first policy. We know that bonds can do great things. Our Lake Merritt bond has turned our lake uh, into the, the living room and, and crown jewel of Oakland. Uh, and this uh, bond, we're confident with its independent oversight, will improve the conditions and allow people to ride uh, a functioning BART and to stop deferring that maintenance, but to actually have a maintained BART system to keep our economy running and to provide recreation and travel opportunities for everybody. So thanks very much for coming. Um, and uh, we hope everyone will support the bond. Jason Elliott from the Office of Mayor Ed Lee. Good morning. Uh, it's Jason Elliott. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff to the Mayor of San Francisco. He's sorry he couldn't be here today. Uh, mayor Lee is proud to join Mayor Schaff and the BART Board in, in supporting this $3.5 billion bond. I want to first start by expressing the Mayor's thanks and congratulations to uh, the BART Board, especially our directors, uh, directors uh, Radulovich and Josefowitz, um, to, to Grace and to the whole staff uh, for getting us to this point. 67% of BART trips begin or end in the downtown San Francisco stations. So truly a healthy economy in San Francisco requires a healthy BART system. They're interlinked. Uh, this bond is exactly what the system needs because it invests in safety and in reliability with a fix it first mentality. Mayor Lee is very supportive uh, of that approach. Uh, it begins to plan, the bond begins to plan for the future uh, of BART with uh, discussion and, and planning for a second crossing. And this is something that we certainly need now. As I was reviewing materials uh, before this morning's event, I saw that some of the highest ridership single days uh, in, for the BART system, going back over many years, are when sports teams win championships. And with the Warriors days away, uh, and of course it's 2016, so we all expect that the Giants will be winning again and we'll have another parade. This bond could not come soon enough, so we are very happy to join uh, the BART directors, the BART staff, Mayor Schaff, and all these uh, community leaders to support this bond uh, for the November ballot. Thank you very much. Commissioner Amy Worth from the MTC. Thank you very much. Uh, I am so pleased to be able to be here today to uh, express my appreciation of the BART bond for their BART 
board for their leadership and moving forward with this bond. As you know, in the Bay Area, uh, public transit is a central key element of mobility. And BART provides critical mobility for nearly half a million riders every day that rely on BART to provide safe, frequent, reliable transportation from home to work. Although we pay in, in the region, most of the money that we invest in transportation goes to fix it first. It isn't sufficient. There are huge needs across our region. And BART's leadership in bringing this bond forward to the voters is, is a very significant step in ensuring that today and in the future, BART will continue to be a reliable central element in mobility for our region. In addition, as we plan for housing and the growth of our region for the economic vitality and prosperity, BART is central in that effort. And so the commitment by, it, by the board to do several things, first of all, to continue its commitment to relying um, on uh, its investment in um, capital from its operating budget, I think is very important to our communities to know when the voters uh, learn about this bond, they'll know it, it uh, provides for the most essential capital investment. It's also a significant partnership between BART, Metropolitan Transportation Commission, and the three BART counties to provide an additional investment in the future in the purchase of BART rail cars so that that will enable service to increase uh, with the new train control system. So we'll be able to provide more frequent uh, train service on all of the lines. So again, uh, our great thanks to the BART board for their leadership in bringing this forward to the voters and ensuring the future mobility for our region. Thank you. Our next speaker is Evelyn Torres of the Latino Young Dems. Um, buenos dias. Um, I want to thank uh, Bart for allowing me to be here today. Uh, my name is Evelyn Torres, and I am the co-president of the Latinx Young Dems of the East Bay. Um, and our work is focused on local Latino communities and on focusing on their pressing issues and needs, as many Latino communities and their issues are rarely discussed. Um, we want to make sure that we create spaces where communities are able to listen and be heard um, from organizations that directly impact their lives on a daily basis. Um, a pressing issue and something really important is transportation. Um, and we're really excited when BART was able to join us for a conversation around transit justice. As many of our Latino communities, including mine, um, use BART um, as an engine um, to get us to work, to get us to school, and to get us to our families. And overall allows us um, to, ha to be able to mobilize throughout multiple cities in the Bay Area. I also think um, want to thank the board members um, for passing this bond um, and making sure that there is sustainable infrastructure um, for all of our writers and our families um, that take part every day. Um, and really um, thank them for working towards creating preventative measures uh, to making sure that our communities, uh, especially Latino communities that are being displaced, um, now more than ever, um, BART is really important to get them back into Oakland and surrounding cities and also allowing them uh, to go back and forth. Um, and with my closing, thank you again for the board for allowing me to be here. Our next speaker is the Executive Director of the East Bay Leadership Council, Kristen Connolly. Thank you so much. The East Bay Leadership Council is a regional advocacy organization representing hundreds of employers across Contra Costa and Alameda County. And we've spent more than the last, you know, about year and a half engaged with BART uh, in terms of identifying the needs for uh, that employers have, have expressed time and time again for investing in a system that is world class that we need and that we just want to I want to join the chorus of support for the leadership demonstrated today by BART in putting this before voters um, whether you ride BART or not uh, we all understand what happens when BART is not running 
and there were recent outages between the North Concord and uh, Pittsburgh Bay Point stations uh, that were really, really frustrating and problematic for residents and employers. Um, and we are really committed to making sure that we stay engaged and that that does not happen. And so I just want to want to really support the BART leadership here. Uh, BART is essential for helping us meet our, our greenhouse gas goals and for clean air and helping people um, get to work and get to where they need to go um, all day long. So the you know at a time when the state and federal governments are not doing what they need to, it's important that the Bay Area be able to invest in what we need to. So um, I just want to you know on behalf of the employers in the region and um, the part of the Bay that you know the Pittsburgh Bay Point line is the busiest, um, the most utilized uh, portion of the BART system, and it is essential that we be able to invest in the train control improvements that Council Member Worth talked about and um, be able to really think about the, the new system so that we have the world-class transit system that the Bay Area needs and deserves. So thank you very much for this opportunity, and I look forward to continuing to work on this issue. Next, we have George Perez Velez of the Stonewall Democrats. That's it. Good morning. I want to thank um, Board Director um, Radulovic for your leadership in this matter. I look at this from a public safety um, standpoint. I sit on three police oversight agencies in the Bay Area, and Barton particularly needs to be able to move between stations, and we also need to refurbish our camera systems within the trains. We have seen that the Bart Police Department needs to move effectively through the system in order to affect the change when there is need. About a year ago, uh, we had the, the A games, we had the, the A's were, were, were playing, the Giants were playing, and it was Pride at the same time. And we saw a system that was so overwhelmed with that ability to be able to transport everyone with such a huge amount of large events that it became a focal point for the East Bay Stonewall Democratic Club. We have worked closely with BART for them to implement a system change in order to be able to supply. But we can do it if the system cannot effectively um, supply the amount of trains and the speed and the and the level of, of, of transportation that that the system needs in days like that. I'm an employer, 300 employees, 60% of them live in the East Bay. I can tell you that 80% of them are community of color. So it's really hard. It makes a big impact when they can go back and forth from the city of San Francisco or any other point in the Bay Area because the transportation system is not supplying the service that they need. So I applaud this 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 um this effort and it's it's a bad thing that, that the bar can do to move the um, the bar system forward. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Stuart, Stuart Cohen of Transform. Uh, good morning, Stuart Cohen, Executive Director of Transform. Uh, and uh, for 19 years we've been working uh, to try to get BART to focus on providing for their core system, making it safe, reliable, and affordable. And we need to do that for just not just the 400,000 riders that are taking it today, but for the next 400,000 as the region grows. So we're incredibly excited that today the BART board is passing this measure that entirely focuses uh, on, on making that more reliable, more frequent system uh, a, a reality. And we need this measure not just for traffic relief, which it will deliver, but we need to keep this Bay Area more affordable with people being able to drive less and own fewer vehicles. And we need to do that for the climate as well um, as, as we work to face, uh, to take on a really urgent climate crisis. There are very few funding measures that you can get behind that will so benefit your quality of life, um, so improve the life for everybody, whether or not they're taking BART or trying to get around driving and need other people to take BART um, as by supporting this measure. Um, like other speakers, we rely on it as a family. My kids get to their friends this way. My in-laws get to their museums and to San Francisco this way. Uh, and my wife and I get to work. If we don't have a system that works for us, uh, we're going to be uh, both killing the Bay Area's economy, our quality of life, uh, and hurting our climate. So, um, you know, we are thrilled that the BART uh, leadership uh, has taken on this very strategic approach um, to make BART safe, reliable, and affordable. Thank you. 
I now like to introduce Renee Rivera of Bike East Bay. Thank you to Bart and Director Radulovich for inviting us to be a part of this today. Uh, my name is Renee Rivera. I'm the Executive Director of Bike East Bay. We represent our 4,000 members as well as everyone who bikes in the East Bay. Um, this measure is so crucial to keeping the whole Bay Area moving, but also to really making it possible here in the East Bay to make the choice to get around by a healthy means, being able to walk and bike to BART. The combination of biking and BART will get you anywhere in the Bay Area, and that's, um, that really makes it possible for, as so many people have spoken already, to live a, live a great life here without having to rely on a car. Um, so our members, BART is so important to our members. We were actually founded the same year as BART opened because people wanted to be able to access BART by bike. So this is a core piece of who we are and having BART continue to work reliably and to invest what's needed in the future of BART is crucial to people being able to live the way they want to in the Bay Area where you really, you can get to the parks by BART and bike, you can get to your job, you can get to events. Um, we are so lucky to have this system. Um, the other thing is we have been so grateful for the investment that BART has already made in making it easier for people to access BART by bike by putting in bike stations like the one just a couple of blocks away at 19th Street, by putting in more bike lockers, more safe bike parking, and doing so many things to make it easier to navigate the system when you're arriving by bike. And more and more people every day are arriving at BART by bike, and this helps our whole region work better. So with really modest investment, there is so much more that BART can do to get even more people using a bike to get from home to BART. Um, we've got all the people who are using BART to get around and helping to relieve congestion and have less emissions and all of the things we need in the region. We also need people to be choosing to get from home or work to BART by, um, by uh, healthy uh, means. So everything that BART does to, with kind of pennies on the dollar to make it easier by having better access at the stations makes a huge difference. So we are really looking forward to working closely with BART to make the system work better for everyone and to really improve access for bikes to the system. Thank you. Our next speaker is Emily Loper of the Bay Area Council. Good morning. The Bay Area Council is a business sponsored public policy organization representing hundreds of employers throughout the Bay Area, and we are very pleased to support this BART bond measure. BART is the critical transit backbone of the Bay Area's commute, but it's struggling to keep up with overwhelming demand. Um, commuters are increasingly frustrated with delays and overcrowding and businesses are increasingly concerned about getting their employees to work today and in the future. A big part of this solution is this bond measure that will address crucial safety, reliability, and crowding concerns. The Bay Area Council is proud to be actively engaged in the campaign to pass this measure in the fall and this investment is critical to ensuring the future economic competitiveness of our region. Thank you. Our final speaker is John Spangler of the BART Bicycle Advisory Task Force. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm John Spangler. I, rep I represent Alameda County on the BART Bike Advisory Task Force. And I can tell you that in the BART Bike Advisory Task Force and in, in the, our, with our colleagues on the Accessibility Task Force, with whom we work very closely on access issues, we always come up against constraints that are resource-based. When we are attempting to get better access for people in wheelchairs or bikes, when we are trying to get bikes on trains, all of these issues always come up against a shortage of resources. And this bond issue 
We were very happy to vote for unanimously on Tuesday night at our last meeting at the BART Bike Advisor Task Force. And we were very happy that the board followed our example this morning and also supported it unanimously. The infrastructure of BART is over four decades old. I can attest to the President Radulovich's point that having a few more years on him, uh, I am older than the BART system by a more amount, a larger degree. And it doesn't get any easier when you get older. The sooner we fix the BART system, the better off we're all going to be, whether we use bikes, whether we are on wheelchairs, whether we are walking to BART, whether we take the bus. Thank you very much. So, uh, so that's all our speakers. Um, you know, there's a saying that says it takes a village. So this is our village, and thank you, um, villagers, uh, for coming out today and uh, supporting capital improvements in your village. And uh, I have a meeting to get back to, so uh, I think we're going to wrap this up. We could probably uh, answer a few of your questions individually, but thank you all for, uh, for coming out today and um, happy to keep answering any questions about the bond. At this point, um, you know, we get out of promotion mode. You know, we can answer uh, factual questions, but there will be a campaign, and on campaign-related questions, you should definitely talk to them. But uh, just wanted to thank uh, everyone again for bringing us uh, to the point uh, we're at today, which is a, a real milestone. Thanks.